Hello, this is the werewolf once more, telling stories. Um, uh, I was asked on the website to tell the story of my first ever kill in werewolf form. Um, so this is that story. Um, I didn't kill. I didn't kill a human the first time in my in my werewolf form. Actually, killed some horses, but um, I was being kind of trained up by my werewolf soul fen. Uh, so yeah, I. It's it, it taught me a few lessons, and I'm I'm going to give you the story of what happened, and <laughs> um, it's quite embarrassing actually. So I'm actually being quite brave sharing this with you because it's kind of like. It was quite a humiliating incident, but um, yeah, if you could if you could subscribe to the channel, that's going to be good for the algorithm stuff. And um, if you could comment or if you want to ask any questions, um, I I'm not an administrator on the website on the YouTube channel, so you would speak to Louis on the on this, who's the documentarian. Um, if you want to speak to me, I'm an administrator on the uh, website um, Werewolf Host. So you can speak to me on there, and I'm actually making this video because someone asked a question. So um, if you want to speak to me and ask me questions, we can do that on the Werewolf um, website. Um, okay, so uh, I'm just going to go into the story. Okay, so uh, it started off because we were we'd like gone out into the night, and Fen I'd already done my first transformation when I. I'd been uh, 12 years old. Um, he'd not allowed me to become a werewolf or a wolf. I, I mean, we'd I'd come together with my werewolf soul when I was a baby, but I'd never been allowed to transform until puberty for some reason. I don't know why. Um, I have no reason to even ask him basically why. But um, yeah, I, I'd um, transformed in my bedroom, so I knew what that was like, and transformed a few times since then just to get a feeling for the body. And then um, Fen decided that I needed to actually go out and use my new tools and my new things um, to actually learn how to kill and use the new body that I'd got, and I was very excited about that. So we'd gone to a, a local farm, uh, and, um, yeah, well, I'll take the story from there. So um, We'd st stood at the fence of the field, the boy and his wolf, so Fenrir is what I call my posit. He chose me when I was a tiny baby. He is the soul of a wolf that was freely given one winter hundreds of years ago in order to save a local tribe of wolves and a pack of feral humans. I've gone into the details of that in another interview, which is how how to become a werewolf. Uh, you'll find it on the, on the YouTube channel if you want. Um, yeah, he's a separate entity to me. He's like a little ghost. Well, not a little ghost. He's a fucking huge ghost. Um... And he follows me around, I can only see him and other werewolves. Uh, and when I change, he comes into me and we transform into being a, a hairy-ass wolf or a hairy-ass werewolf. I'd done my first transformation at puberty, and I'd killed before as a human. You can actually read it again or listen to my first kill, which was when I was three years old, um, of a human. Uh, but now it was time to try the new transformation body. The wolf and the werewolf. I, I was really excited, and I have to say that Fen was very excited as well. It was dusk, and we'd watched the farming family drive away into the night on some family outing or other. We'd made sure that they would be away for the next thing that was going to happen. Fen was teaching me well, making sure that I was get that I was going to wolf out in the safest environment that I could. We did not want anybody walking in at that point in the in the future. That would be a happy bonus, but right now, it may have uh, been a little too much. I mean, this is going to be my first time in the in wolf's clothing, using the tools that my link to the posit had now given me. It was all very exciting. I was I was finally after twelve years of knowing that one day I could be able to do this. I was actually finally going to be able to wolf out fully. I was going to be able to rip and kill and consume using my new body. Honestly, it was a a feeling of anticipation that I find difficult to explain to humans. I, I kind of link the feeling to something that you can understand. That feeling is that do you know that that moment where you know that you're going to get laid. Not the not the sex. But the actual amazing feeling when you know you're going to get laid, 
you know, you sit on the edge of your prospective lover's bed knowing you are going to get it. I often find that this sensation is better than the hot and sweaty sex that comes after it. Well, sort of-ish. I was starting to feel alive, truly, and this was the moment of coming of age. Fen had been preparing me for this moment, and he told me that on this day he was going to tell me how to kill and how to take down my prey in deep and despicable detail. So we stood at the fence... The horses in the paddock were trying to get as far away from as possible. They probably did that animal sensing thing of knowing that, that at the end of the field was a definite shithead getting ready to do some shithead things to them. Fen turned and looked at me. He was as tall as I was from front paws to our noses and he looked into my eyes as he told me the werewolf secret of taking down a prey item. Okay, Will, there is no magic way to do this. It is going to be short and bloody. You can take your time and you can kill them slowly or you can rip them asunder and kill them instantly. You decide. With animals, Will, I tend to kill them quickly. They have no consciousness or understanding of the process. They have no ethics or guilt or any of that bollocks. So the torture of them is really a little below us. Not that committing pain for pain's sake is a bad thing, but in this case, I want you to take these animals out with the quick precision that they deserve. And uh, this was all done telepathically, by the way, well linked telepathically. I smiled and turned back to the horses in the distance as I felt the new itchy feeling pervade my skin from the change that I would soon be going through. Are you ready, Will? asked the somewhat concerned Fen. He could see that I was getting excited. All I could see was the, the three animals at the end of the field. All I wanted to do was go play. I could sense the beating of their huge hearts and I could hear the breathing patterns as they held a little distance and a little distress at my excitement. I turned to Fen and he smiled a wolfy smile and then he slowly broke down into a black mist and forced himself into my body and as he entered me I changed. My body inflated and my musculature increased. My legs became the trifold hind legs of the wolf. A wolfine face projected forward until and fangs and canassials lined my new jaws. I then became shrouded in the darkness of my pelt. It's the blackest of matte blacks, so black it swallowed the last of the evening light, making me a black shadow in the night. I opened my eyes to my new sight, my new focus on the night. The moon lit the evening like the sun lit the day. My ears were my radar dishes now. I could move them independently to focus on the sounds and vibrations that I could never hear in my human form. I could hear the creaking of the grass stems and the rattling of the seed heads at their apexes. I could hear the grasshopper as he cleaned his wings, a nightly ritual for him before he slept. I could hear now a sea of sound that became a noisecape for my delectation. Lastly, my olfactory senses became more than a simple sense. It became everything. Closing my eyes, I could still see just with ears and nose. A composite world that was so deep in layers now due to the depth in time afforded by the sense of smell. Vision is somewhat fast and fleeting. It's this kind of sense because of the speed of the particles that make the sense apparent. Photons travel really, really, really fast. So vision is very in the moment. Once those photons have reflected and gone, it is over. Done no more. The only reason we keep on seeing is due to fresh reflections of new photons as they bounce off our subject to provide us with fresh vision. Sound in the medium of air is somewhat slower. This is due to the slower speed of the energy that is created. Sound vibrations linger a little longer and we can sense them and using an animal ear we can triangulate the direction and the distance that these sounds sit at. If it creates a sound we can find it and locate it quickly and easily. But even sound is pretty quick and gone, although in its way it's useful to me as the light is to the humans. The world of scent is something different. Smells dwell once left. They slowly dissipate and I can get as much information from them as they are often more important to me than sight. Especially on the hunt. Or when being hunted. There is a reason why a hunted animal can often outfox the human hunters as they have this one sense that can be the difference. I find it difficult to describe the way it works, but I imagine it as a colourful hues that are left in different ways as something has gone by. As it slowly fades, we can follow it. As we follow the path and the smell, as it increases in strength along the way, I know I'm getting closer. I can also smell things like stress and illness and how fit something is or someone is. 
So you can imagine that the world that I was now in was pretty full on. It was so close to being overwhelming, but it was truly exciting, truly exciting. Now I changed. I snorted the air downwind of the nervous animals at the other end of the paddock. It was time now to do the thing that I'd come here for, the murdering and the killing. I silently leapt the fence and landed on the padded paws and ran towards my prey. The horses skittered and scattered and protested in snorts and screams of the beasts that they are. I followed, followed one as it scattered and separated itself in, into the corner of the fenced area. It had nowhere to go and stood watching me, snickering and nervously swinging its tail. I slowly walked towards the horse and could feel that its little mind was in panic and fear at what stood before it. I was waiting for that moment when it would run. Suddenly it burst by and ran up the side of the fence. I struck, my claw reached out and tore into the back leg of the animal. The animal did not fall, but it screamed as the flesh was ripped from it, its rear swinging wildly as I tried to stay as it tried to stay up on its feet, which somehow it did, but I caught it in two strikes and leapt onto its back, sinking my claws into its forelegs on each side and biting into the back of its running beast's neck. I felt my teeth come together around the spinal cord and I crushed my way into it. The horse ran another two steps before it realised it was dead and it dropped to the floor, me riding it as it slid to a stop. The feeling was exhilarating, the blood ran in my throat and the smell was divine as death of the creature was realised. I was slightly out of breath and standing over the dead animal as it let go of any grip it had on the world. It was a moment of utter truth. I now turned to see where the other two horses were. They stood in the corner of the paddock, both watching me with fear and interest. I roared a tempered roar of puberty and walked towards the horses. I was excited for the next few moments. The creatures were not panicking now. The lead horse was a large stallion and he started pawing the ground with his hooves. It was a warning that I should back off. He stamped into the dust and lifted it into the air while whinnying his protests at my proximity. I ignored this warning and carried on my slow walk to get towards the animal's head. As I got closer, he backed up until he had no further to go. Then, without warning, he reared, kicking out with his hooves of his front legs in my direction while swinging his head to butt me. This was amazing to behold. The huge, handsome beast was trying to stand his ground against me. I circled him. As I got closer, he again stamped his warning. I ignored him and crept closer. Suddenly he reared, but this time I was ready and leapt into the rearing beast to snap at his exposed throat. I timed it badly and the horse fell on me with both front legs, knocking me to the ground and then giving me a few stamps and kicks as I scrambled away. I was a little bruised and humbled by the experience. This creature could hurt me with some defiance. I now knew that taking this animal head on was not a sensible method of attack. I would have to scare him into running, then bring him down as I followed. I jigged to the left and right and then ran around the horse, making him run, but only as he kicked with his back legs striking me in the head and snout. Blood leapt onto my fur and I fell to the floor as my balance left me. It was only a moment before the anger of my treatment by my prey made me get up and charge after him. I caught up alongside the running stallion and sideswiped him, running my body into his and pushing him from his feet onto the side. He hit the ground and screamed as he tried to get to his feet once more, but it was too late. I was stood on my downed opponent's chest and had grabbed the equine head, lifting it and sinking my teeth into the soft throat. I shook my head and ripped back and forth whilst tearing into its flesh as the animal squealed, blood pooling in my mouth. The poor horse kicked once or twice to try and get me to leave him be, but it was too late. I sat crushing the windpipe and releasing the lifeblood from its vessels. I could feel its pulse start to slow as its body went from thrashing to tense and then to relaxed. It was gone. It had been my first ever test. I now knew that I would have to be clever at taking down my prey in some cases. It would not always be easy and straightforward as just charging in and killing. A good lesson learnt on my first kill as a werewolf. The last horse was a little mare who stood in the corner. She had her back to me and it seemed like she did not want to see what was coming. Her tail was twitching and she was very skittish and she was not looking at me at whatever the cost. I wandered over. This would be an easy kill. She was nothing like the juggernaut that I'd just pulled down. I smiled as I walked towards her and I wandered up silently like the proverbial ninja walking through long grass. This kill would just take a moment. 
Then I saw her move. Her back legs kicked out. One struck me in the chest and the other in the... Well, I'll be honest, in the balls. It was a super accurate shot and my world became a centre of pain around the area. The world went black for a moment and then I woke up naked and in my human form lying on the ground with Fen stood over me laughing as I tried to breathe. I just could not breathe. No breath would go in. I was going to die from asphyxiation. Will relaxed. Stay calm. You're just winded, came into my brain. Stay calm. I lay, lay there clutching my manhood and testicles and wanting to look at the mess that the kick had made. One of the happiest pastimes was masturbating. I just really hoped I still had a dick. It did not feel like it. But after the first breath eventually arrived, all was significantly better. After a few moments, I sat up, still holding my balls. I asked Fen questions in my head, the first one being, Why did you leave me? Fen laughed and he said, Those are your balls, mate. You can deal with them and the pain. I laughed in response and thanked him a lot with a sarcastic twang. Slowly the pain reduced and my life became a little more bearable. What was it we learned tonight, Will? asked Fen. Well, we learned that being kicked in the balls is fucking awful, I replied. He laughed. And what else? Maybe never to take an opponent for granted? Be aware that even the softest of targets can surprise you. Good, said Fen. Well done. Right, I said. Let's fuck this thing up now. My balls need their revenge. No, said Fen. That little mare taught you an important lesson tonight. Let's leave her be. She deserves it.